The first reading is from 1 Peter, chapter 2, verses 1 to 8. In the Church Bibles, this is on page 1218. Peter is offering encouragement to suffering Christians. And this is the word that was preached to you. Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it, you may grow up in your salvation now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious, But to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke, the wise and foolish builders. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? As for everyone who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice, I will show you what they are like. They are like a man building a house who who dug down deep and laid the foundation on rock. When a flood came, the torrent struck that house but could not shake it because it was well built. But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck that house, it collapsed and its destruction was complete. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Dear Lord, as we gather together to read your word, help us to have open hearts and ears and minds. Amen. Please be seated. So we're beginning our Lent series, Who is the Christ? And the first in that series is Christ the Builder. So I want to begin by asking you, what is your favorite building or one of your favorite buildings and this is mine the Taj Mahal it's a memorial to Shah Jahan's favorite wife and it took 12 years to build it's been astounding people since it was finished in the 17th century and here's a photo of me sitting there on a sneaky work trip I managed to get a visit into the Taj Mahal and uh, that's my favorite building But whatever your favorite building is, I'm sure that it was built on very firm foundations and carefully constructed by expert builders. Now, our reading from Luke's Gospel is all about building on firm foundations. And it's one of those Bible passages that doesn't really need a lot of explanation. Most people of any faith or no faith agree you can't build a house that will last without first digging strong foundations. Otherwise, this happens. (laughs) It's It's even become a cautionary tale that we teach our children. I think you all know these famous builders. (laughs) They have a very similar story to the man in Jesus' parable. 
But on, on a more serious note, if you saw the pictures of the tragic earthquake in Turkey and uh, Syria, you could clearly see sometimes buildings completely collapsed and then not very far away, buildings which were still standing, which had withstood the earthquake. And I wonder how many lives could have been saved had those buildings been built with better techniques. Now, in our passage, it's easy to focus on the story of the wise and foolish builders. But Jesus was not just giving his followers a lesson in construction skills. The most important part of his message is in the first verse, and it can easily be overlooked. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? The wise builders are the ones who hear Jesus' words and put them into practice. They're the ones building a spiritual life based on firm foundations. The ones who hear Jesus' words and do not put them into practice are building a spiritual life without a foundation, and it won't withstand difficult times. Jesus makes his point clear. Don't just listen to my teachings and then carry on as before. Take action. Live out my teachings. And his point is so important that he repeats it again in Luke in chapter 8 and chapter 11. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Matthew also includes this parable in his gospel and in the letter of James, Jesus is recorded as saying, my mother and my brother are those who hear my word and put it into practice. So this is a strong message. And we need to look at these teachings that Jesus wants us to put into practice. And they appear earlier in Luke chapter 6. And they're very similar to the words of the Sermon on the Mount, in Matthew's Gospels, and they encapsulate the very basis of Christian living. There's a strong echo of Moses here on Mount Sinai, giving the Ten Commandments to the Jews, except that here, Jesus is giving his commandments to all who follow him. And they are quite something. The bar is very high. Jesus teaches us that the way to live is in fact the polar opposite of the world's way. In chapter six, you will read the Beatitudes, and they surprise us because they prioritize the poor, the hungry, the meek in spirit, the peacemakers, and those who find themselves excluded from society for their faith. But it's these people who will have joy in heaven. And on the other hand, those who are rich and have food plenty and high standing in society, they've had their reward already. It's a bit like an award ceremony in reverse. When we have an award ceremony, we award the winners of the biggest, the best, the strongest, and the most powerful. But in Jesus' awards, they go to the powerless. So following on from the Beatitudes, Jesus expands the accepted teaching of murder, adultery, and divorce. And he tells us it's not just doing those acts that is wrong, it's the very thought of them. And as if this is not enough, Jesus then follows up with the big surprise teaching, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, turn the other cheek if someone strikes you, and if someone takes your coat, give them your shirt. Lend to people expecting nothing in return. And just to add a bit more in, don't judge. Take the log out of your own eye before you take the speck out of your brother's eye. There's a lot in them to contend with. But before you all start giving away your shirts and lending each other money, it's important to note that Jesus is using metaphorical language to describe the attitude and the quality of life that he's looking for us. It's not particularly a set of rules. So hang on to your shirt. Still, 
the bar is very high for those who choose the Christian life. How on earth can we put these teachings into practice as Jesus asks us to do? When Al Ann Calver is the author of our Lent book, and she says that our quick fix, get it now, pay later, Western culture doesn't help us build spiritual foundations. We get bored, we want something new, we're not always interested in the long term, we like short term fixes. Just ask the three prime ministers we had in 2020, 2022, sorry. But implementing Jesus' teaching is not as daunting as it might at first seem. Just as a builder in real life has specialist tools for the job, we also have tools to help build a strong spiritual life. And they are there, small. You know them. Prayer, Bible reading, sharing fellowship, and witnessing to others. Like many Christians, I try and pray and read the Bible each day. It doesn't always happen. And when it doesn't, I start to feel a bit out of kilter. Something is missing. I need these spiritual tools to negotiate my way through a life, through life in a culture which often runs counter to Christ's teaching. I need my spiritual tools at all times, good and bad, especially bad. But the best thing is, we don't just have a spiritual toolbox. We have a relationship with the master builder himself on call. It may take you a long time to find a plumber in Surrey, but Jesus is just literally a prayer away. Now, in our lives, we've probably all built up some parts which are really well done, but other parts may not pass the building inspection. We've all done a bit of dodgy cowboy building, spiritually speaking. Again, there's good news because we can be forgiven. And with God's help, we can make some repairs to our spiritual life, even major ones. Perhaps you've had a house underpinned or completely remodeled. The same thing can happen in our spiritual lives. Lent is a very good time to reflect on our life and inspect what we've built up in it. Do you need to do any spiritual repair work? Does anything need to change? And do you need help with those changes? That's where meeting and sharing with others really helps. Perhaps you're facing storms in your life right now that are shaking your foundations. Don't face them alone, get help. Finally, there is a joke about estate agents who manage buildings. My estate agent sold me a two-story house. One story when I bought it, but another when I moved in. <laughs> Let's be people for whom the spiritual building on the outside matches the one on the inside. Let's be people who listen to Jesus' teachings and put them into action to build a firm foundation, solid as a rock. We've got a picture there. There, that. I don't know where that house is, but it's not going anywhere. <laughs> I'd just like to finish with a prayer from our Lent book. Father, the grass withers and the flowers fall, but we thank you that your word stands forever. Lord, we praise you that although life is short, we can know you in it. You have not abandoned us. You are faithful through every storm. Help us, Lord Jesus, to dig deep foundations in relationship with you. Amen. <clears throat> Loving Father, we come before you in penitence and faith, seeking your guidance and peace in all situations. We pray for the church throughout the world, thinking of all who have been called to serve you in many different churches and in many different ways. We pray especially for the church in Nigeria and for the general election taking place there this weekend, 
that the right leaders may emerge for that country. In our own church, we pray especially today for the work of the Fair Trade and Eco team, giving thanks for their hard work and commitment. During this season of Lent, we remember the various courses, studies, retreats, and other observations being undertaken, thinking especially of our parish Lent course, that this may be a time of reflection on our lives, enabling us to grow closer to you and to be strengthened for your service. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. We pray for the nations of the world, holding to you especially today the whole situation following the earthquakes in Turkey and Syria, praying for those who are injured, those who have lost loved ones, livelihoods and homes, and those working to bring aid and to relieve suffering. We continue to pray for the country of Ukraine, praying for those national leaders with power over war or peace, that you will give them wisdom and guide them in the ways of freedom, truth, justice, and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. We pray for our own country. Bless and guide Charles our King and all leaders, whether local or national, whether elected or voluntary, that they may have the wisdom and integrity to work together for the common good. In our cycle of prayer, we pray today for the residents of Bookham Grove and Grove Corner, each with their own particular joys, concerns, and needs. May they be good neighbors to one another. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbors, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. We pray for all who are in particular need at this time, those suffering from illness of the body or the mind, those who are anxious or fearful, those who suffer on behalf of a loved one, and those awaiting tests, results, or surgery. Today we hold to you especially Eldred Clark, Valerie Good, Tim Carlier, Elizabeth Finucan, Catherine Jobson, Tim Reader, Nigel Fenner, Jenny Carlier, and any known to us personally who are unwell. Father, take our thoughts and prayers and use them to further your work of healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember those who have died, whether recently or in past years, thinking especially today of Patricia Dewar and all whose memory we hold dear. Giving thanks for their lives and the happiness shared with them. And we ask your peace and comfort for all who mourn the loss of one dear to them. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of Nicholas and of all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. 